Hi. So as the name suggests, we're going to be discussing about caviola vesicular transfer today. And it's going to be a basic approach, not too detailed for everyone to understand. Let's start off by discussing about what is called lipid raft. So these are particular micro domains in your membrane which have cholesterol, sphingomyelin and glycosphingolipid which are there predominantly. So they are rich in these things and these micro domains are what are essentially called your lipid rafts. Now when you talk about lipid raft, you can see that structures like an uh, integral protein as you can see over here, the scaviolin. This is embedded into these lipid rafts. So this is the base of what you call caviola. Okay, so these lipid raft with caviolin basically forms your cavioli. Okay, uh, now this might seem a little confusing compared to how this diagram is. So we just invert it and this is actually how it is. This is the cytosolic side and that is the outside extracellular part. So this, as you can see, does not cross over to the outer leaflet, remains in the inner leaflet. And on the opposite side, near the extracellular side, there's a receptor. Okay, so that ligands can bind over there. And this never crosses the inner leaflet and stays in the inner leaflet, the cavity. Now coming to the membrane, as we had said earlier, this is rich in your cholesterol, sphingomyelin, glycosphingolipid, and your caviolin protein is the integral protein, and the receptor, that is the GPI anchored protein. So basically, this is a uh, phosphoinositol, and that has been glycosylated, and a protein has been anchored to it. So that is why it's called GPI, glycosylated phosphoinositol anchored protein. And apart from this, there's one other component called the cavin, which is a peripheral uh, protein. Okay, this is the integral protein, this is a peripheral protein, cavin. And there are also cytoskeletal structures which are there closely associated with it. So what happens is when a ligand binds to this, that will result in a whole cellular activation mechanism because of which ultimately the final thing what happens is a tyrosine phosphorylation of your caviolin happens. And that will start off the whole process of this budding and going in and uh, your dynamin gets activated. So this is your dynamin 2. Okay, so even this is there in cavillin mediated vesicular transport. And this is how it acts. It acts like a spring. It comes and then it widens like that. And this part buds off. So like this from different parts, multiple uh, cavioli enclosed uh, you know, inter internalized parts of the membrane will come out like this. So that together fuse and form what is called a caviosome. Okay, so this is not endosome, this is a caviosome. So you can see over here the structure. This is the actual diagram of a caviosome. And this caviosome later, uh, you know, through uh, your cytoskeletal elements is going to get transported along your microtubule to whatever is going to happen later. To, this is the type of endocytosis we are talking about. So ultimately like this, uh, your whole thing gets transported. Okay, so this was a very brief, basic description of how a caviolin mediated vesicular transport takes place. Okay, uh, I'll be uploading another video where there is going to be much more detailed uh, description about it. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks a lot.